Today on The Music Reel, I'm Nicola Burton for Music Means Business, and my guest today is Justin Doran. Now, Justin, how are you today? How are you? Good to see you. I'm very good. Now, I'll just explain to everyone who you are. So, Justin, I met um, at a Q Music event a few years ago at Big Sound, and you and your band Stone Empire, I think, had just come back from America, I think, when we We're met. Just- you were just about to go. Correct, Great. Yeah. And so since then, you have been a prolific writer, a prolific, um, I guess you've, this is, I think you're about to release your fifth single. And your single at the moment, Mojave On My Mind, has reached number one on the Australian Radio Independent Charts, which is incredible accolade. So congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're well. Yeah. Look, I, I love your music. It's... it's um, filled with so much passion. I know the times that we've spoken, the one consistency with you is this incredible vision and passion you have for your music. It's never wavered. You have backed it up every step of the way. And I think it's a great example for any artist out there who wants to actually establish a career. Um, You've been a great light, I guess, at the end of the tunnel for them. So I thought I'd take this opportunity today to have a chat to you, first of all, to see how lockdown has impacted what you've been doing in your music, if at all? Yeah, um, it's actually been quite good. I've enjoyed it. It's given me a lot of time to focus on other things, um, like renovating the house. And I'm basically, you can see behind me, this is my lounge room, which is also um, a live music room, which is fully treated, ready to be turned into a recording studio. Um, and so I've been working on that. Um, a lot of time to write more music. I've got a pretty much got another album in the bag ready to go after this one that I'll wow. start working on. Um, yeah, so lots of time to do that and hang out with the kids. And so it hasn't really affected me in that way. Um, and I'm still releasing singles from the, uh, the upcoming album, Harvey. So. I think um, when I first spoke to you, that was what really got me is that you just have so much to say, so much to say in music. What's driving that? What's driving the message, the voice in the, in the songs that you're releasing? Um, oh, it's a, it's a big background. My things from, from right back to my childhood, um, what my first experience with music as a young child, um, small town in country New South Wales, um, I had cousins who were right into ACDC when ACDC were breaking at the time. And I was only three or four and, yeah, I've told this story many times, but my cousin Ricky, um, if you pick, picture Ricky, he's like a big front rower, flanny shirt, and a mullet, you know, um, yeah, back in the day. And he sat me in front of his speakers and put them to my head and turned up Highway to Hell and said, listen to this. And that was my first, the ACDC. So from that point on, I was something from that just got me. And um, it's been with me ever since. But then, seeing what's happening musically, um, just with what the government seemed to be doing to the Australian music scene, um, trying to kill this scene that was prolific in, um, in world music. So, you know, bands like In Excess, ACDC, The Angels, that all come out of Australia. And um, that's angered me. <laughs> that's, that's really angered me because they're killing the most amazing music, uh, rock and roll music that could, uh, you know, grace our ears. And um, so... Yeah, that, that's one side of it. But also in my childhood, um, I had, my mother had a, a lot of issues that um, pretty much led me to bring myself up in a lot of ways. And um, music was always my go-to. And so, yeah, there's just this inner passion that I don't even can't describe at times. But, yeah, that makes any sense. Oh, it does because so many artists say the same thing. It's like a, a really traumatic childhood um, somehow gives you this... There's so much, so many stories, so much to say, and the music gives you this opportunity to express it, get it out, and it's almost like a, a part of your health, self, like, like your self-care health routine, isn't it? To, to really get it out and express it and process it. So it's really great to hear that you're so conscious of it and you're just like focused and nothing's, like I think that's the thing that's impressed me. Nothing's going to stop you. Nothing. It's great. <laughs> Not even <laughs> exactly now you're with um, rhinoceros music um, 
so um, they're, they've really done a great job with what you guys are doing. So you've got your album coming out. Are you looking, do you think that um, a tour may be happening later on this year with you guys? Uh, that, that's certainly the plan. Um, Stone Empire have been on a bit of a, a hiatus um, just with Brendan, our drummer, having to do some other things uh, to focus on. But um, we're actually in talks with a pretty prolific festival. Um, I won't mention names just yet, just in case it doesn't come through. But um, if that were to come about in 2021, Stone Empire would get back together and play a really good show if we get onto it. Um, apart from that, um, my solo music, my acoustic stuff, um, yes, I'm, I'm about to release another single um, on the 12th, which is Pictures on the Wall. And my, my plan is after that, we'll release the full album. We've released five singles from the album now and um, let that do its thing. And then, yeah, it all depends on this COVID-19 thing, you know, but definitely my goal at the end of this is to hit the road and tour it. So. Awesome. So what do you think moving forward? How do you think that this whole COVID-19 lockdown, how do you think that's going to change the way that we tour and we get our music out there? How do you think it's going to be different? Do you think it will be much different or do you think it will go back to the way that it was? Um, well, one thing I really hope is that we, we found it with Stone Empire. We, we sort of hit the scene in a big way and then suddenly the Sydney lockout laws hit, which really affected us. And, um, and then now you've got the COVID-19 issue where people can't go to see shows. Um, there's a new, new wave of live streaming and I, I happen to be um, very lucky to be good friends with Paula Jones, who's running the Blind Chihuahua um, live streaming service. Um, I've done a few live streams with her and I know she's doing a lot of work with bands and um, even big names like Steve Balby from Noiseworks. And, um, you know, I, I really think that this period of people um, seeing, seeing what we can do using technology is, is a really cool thing. But the other thing I really hope is that after this, people being locked down so long that they want to get out of the house, they want to go and see, and they want to experience the feeling of, seeing a live band or a live musician and you know what I mean? Just that connection that you, you can't get any other way. That's you can't get life. that live streaming. Can you, it's gotta be live. It's that, it's that energy exchange. A lot of artists have said the same thing. They're really hoping that after this lockdown, people are just like, I just want to get out and just really appreciate live music and listening to your story. So you've, you've been, you've dealt with the lockdown, you've dealt with the Sydney lockout laws. So it's like a constant slap in the face for the music industry. And now we're completely decimated. So I guess yeah. what would be your message to fans out there who really love live music? How could they help support and bring it back? Um, you know, obviously the best way to keep an artist going is, um, is to stream their music, buy their music, um, you know, without an artist making any sort of income, they're not going to be able to continue. And then obviously once the venues open up again for people to start going, hey, we don't want to lose the music scene. We don't want to lose music. We need to get out and support it. And that, like it used to be, you know, when, when you go to a show and there'd be hundreds of people and everyone's enjoying the atmosphere and the bodies rubbing against each other and that's what needs to happen again. You know? yeah. People once said again off the lounge, away from the computer screen, get into it and see live music. That's, that's the best way. Yeah, I love it. Well, look, Justin, it's been great to talk to you today. And I think it's, it's really good for artists to hear how you've just been so committed to just getting your music out there. And, you know, how you've, you've gone, like I said, you've gone through these two challenges and yeah, nothing's going to stop you. So it's a good, good story of resilience. And look, good luck with the renovations up there. I hope that they get finished soon with your studio. <laughs> it was my daughter's birthday the other week so <laughs> oh keep it up for as long as you can it's it's nice to celebrate something in this day of lockdown absolutely my little bloke austin he loves it so they've stayed up for a while so. <laughs> i think that's a good idea if we can't celebrate outside with live music let's celebrate inside with balloons exactly it's, it's been a pleasure Thank you. it's been great justin and i will talk to you very soon and good luck with everything we look forward to seeing your tour take no care worries. Thanks, Justin.